I have the pleasure today of speaking with Phil Mickelson, not about short game, but about driving. He continues to defy his age, and you're out driving guys in their 20s. It's unreal. How do you do it? So, we talk, can we talk about over speed training, and how are you keeping up your speed? So there's a lot of things that we can do to maintain our speed. As I get older, it's more difficult, but there's a few things that I've learned that uh, some people can utilize themselves that would really help. But before we go into any of that, the first thing is you, you have to have an off course regime so that you, you don't get hurt. So what happens is when we start getting into the speed training, the tendency is to swing so fast that we overextend the facet joints in our back. So we have to start with a week or two at least of physio ball training and getting your back and your core strong so that it's it, it can support what we're about to do. You don't want to just jump into this. That's right. the first thing. That's the warning at the bottom. Just Okay, so <laughs> there's a few things that I like to do. I'll hit some balls with a very heavy club. This is 310 gram oh, wow. uh, head. And the reason for this is after the round, I like to hit five balls as hard as I can with this because I'm already fatigued and worn down and this just builds muscle. Okay. So this is swinging slow and, and it's not training me to speed, swing it fast, but it's building the muscles to swing fast and it also helps me wait on it so I don't get too fast from the top, but I create speed down here. So it's a very heavy club and I'll swing it and try to hit it and I have to wait or else I'll kind of hang it. So that'll help square it up. That's, that's one thing. Then I travel either speed sticks where you have three of them. This is easier for me to travel with, so I only have to carry one and I can interchange the weights. I'll knock knock it down and make it a little bit lighter. Oh, cool, this weights just slide out. Yeah. Nice. So I'll, uh, this'll be now lighter than a normal driver and now I'm gonna try to train myself for speed, but the key here is that you actually wanna go both ways. So your deceleratory muscles in my swing are the acceleratory muscles going the other way. So I want to make sure that I swing fast going both ways. Ooh. So I'm training myself and I'll usually do, I'll usually do five swings both sides. I've already warmed up a little bit. And then I'll try to go a little bit as fast as I can the other way just to get loosened up. So that's now training myself to swing it faster. And Another thing I've learned from guys like Podrick Harrington, Barry Henson, older guys that really hit it hard, is a couple, twice a week after I play, 25 drives as hard as I can. Okay. Not worrying about where it goes, but just getting my nervous system to fire faster. So I'll do that. And then we get down to you know applying it. So um, there are some power moves that TPI, who are the forefront of speed training, and you being a long driver, are familiar with some of them. And I'll only focus on one for me, but there are a few. So they talk about maybe at the top of the swing, you can bend your elbow to get more leverage. Okay. Uh, that's a tough one for me because the timing. They talk about opening the rear foot so you get a better turn. I don't really need to do that because I have pretty good hip mobility. So that would be accommodating you know a particular body style that doesn't yeah. quite turn as well uh, the one i really like to focus on is the the front leg push because it's important for creating speed like if i'm pushing off my front leg if i take the club back when i put push up my hands are going to come down yes i can't keep my hands up as i'm as you're going yeah right so it creates more of a whip ground, right right if you watch the guys who are long drivers like bryson mm -hmm. bubba and who hit it really hard, all the long drive guys, your knee is meant to bend, okay? There's a minimal rotation, but not a lot. It is not meant to support the type of violent rotation. So it's important that this give a little bit, okay. that your toe be able to give. So as we push, you actually want your foot to come off the ground. It relieves the pressure and lets your toe open up. Okay. We've learned the hard way through a number of players who have not done that, yeah. who swing violently, and they have a bunch of knee surgeries because it's just not the way physiologically your knee is designed to move. So as I push, one of the power sources is to kind of push up with your front leg. Mm -hmm. It's almost up and back. I don't want to be going forward because then it's like throwing a baseball while moving forward. You want to create that kind of whip. So your body's almost like going back as you're throwing. So I want to like have my body work back, at least feel that way. So that's how I'll create a little bit more of a power source in my leg. So I'm going to do a regular swing. Okay. And we'll see what kind of ball speed I hit. Now it's just very kind of controlled stock swing. All right, I and saw I, that you didn't push off. I hit 167 ball speed. That's not going to be very quick. So now okay. let me speed it up. 
and I'm going to use more leg and push back this way. Okay. Um, make sure I have a good turn. I'm trying to accelerate through the through the shot more. So I'll speed one up here. Now you see my leg has opened up, my toes come back, it's relieved the pressure, and we're at 176. So I'm able, able to jump it up nine That's miles per hour by adding that in it, and it takes all the pressure off and then prevents injury. That was like 12 for just doing one thing. 12 miles per hour ball speed, what? Yeah, yeah. Um, so there, are, like I said, okay. there are things that we can do to, to increase our speed um, as we get older. Now, if I can get to the, if I get to the gym and I start doing exercises that strengthens, let's say that leg, that strengthens the explosiveness, yeah. it continues to go up even more. I know for you, you do a lot of things like supplements and you do weightlifting, right? And you do bands and you're trying to keep the inflammation down. But have you done anything physically to kind of help with your hip rotation and, and like your shoulder movement from, I feel like even just a few months ago, your swing is just so much more dynamic and just since we saw you at the beginning of season in Mexico. Well, thank you, and I, you know, every day I do stuff, absolutely. Yeah. So every day I start and end the day with physio ball work to make sure my back is healthy. There are three areas that, we, that I'm concerned about as a golfer, knees, uh, low back, and shoulders. So I'm constantly stretching, I'm constantly activating those muscles to, to strengthen them and prevent injury. I'll, I'll carry a band with me in my bag and I'll put it on the golf cart and I'll do shoulder work before I play. Oh, perfect. Uh, and make sure I do particular exercises because I want to protect rotator cuffs and stuff, which is a common injury in golf. I want to make sure my low back doesn't get tight. That starts for me in the hamstrings and then it goes up into the hips and then into the low back. So I'm constantly doing stretches where, you know, I'll, I'll try to relieve the pressure on my back as I go down and try to, you know, create certain movements. So I want to strengthen uh, and flexibility in the hamstrings. And then one of, uh, one of the things that gets the small muscles in my back, which is very hard to do, is a deep squat where I push out of my leg. So I'll try to keep my feet square. Mm -hmm. uh, and I do this like a dozen times a day. My feet square, I do a deep squat into my heels so that my heels stay on the ground. And then I push out. And as I push out and let kind of my, let myself sag down, the muscles around the spine start to relax. And so those are, that's one of the things I do to keep my back in better shape. Well, has your flexibility and your strength, has that changed what you're using in your bag and your equipment? Have you, I, I mean, I noticed you changed your shaft here. So does that, are you noticing changes? Having to make equipment changes? Uh, as I uh, speed up, I haven't, I have made equipment changes, but this is more to match the shaft with the head. I find that as I change heads, uh, and change weighting in the head, the dynamics of the shafts actually perform better with certain weightings. And so that's more of why I've, I've gone from say the red to the blue to the black and have interchanged that. But what I do notice is that as I speed the swing up, mm -hmm. I have to change what I call my release point in the golf swing. So okay. I have such a long kind of lazy swing, which is a, a real plus to my longevity, which is reducing a lot of pressure on my body. It's not short, violent, and restrictive. I let my hips move and let my body move. Right. And I create length, I use length to create the leverage that I want. And so it takes a lot of pressure off. But uh, as I do that, I have to change where the release is. So because it's so long and smooth, my hands kind of just release through the ball. But if I speed it up, when I get down to the ball, the face will be open. So I have to kind of feel like I'm releasing the club. Can you show us the two different ones? Kind of like a, like a it, tempoed one and then a... It won't be, it won't be noticeable right. uh, to the eye, but it's down. just a feeling that I create. So okay. when I'm trying to hit one hard and I'll speed one up here okay. even more, I feel like from here, I'm trying to release the club. Got Not it. like really cast, but I'm trying to get that face square. I'm going to be swinging so fast that I don't want to get down here and then and have the to... And the face is way open and you correct. release. It. So, it, like I say, it's just a feeling of release rather than through the ball where I'm trying to create a little draw or a little fade uh, on a normal swing. But uh, this one I'll speed up and then try to create a release, a release point a little bit earlier so it okay. should not hang on me. So you can see that ball drew. I got it to 177. Yeah. And. Um, 
that's allowing me to swing faster and still get the, the face to square. But it, th that's hard to really articulate or, or, or show or see visually. I think we can see that. I think it was great. Okay. Now, last thing, kind of, what is the difference in your swing weights from, say, this heavy shaft to what you play? So uh, this is a couple hundred grams heavier than normal, and it's uh, difficult to, to swing and swing fast. But like I say, it builds muscle. So you want to build the muscle. Right and then you got to train for speed. So I do this usually at the end of the day. I'll hit three or four shots at the start of the day because it gets me to wait for the club, but it's not going to help me swing faster for the day because it's it's actually training me to swing it slower because it's, it's so heavy. I want to build the muscle after the round and I want to create the speed before the round, which is why I go lighter. Oh, so it's much lighter. Right. Uh, well, what's much lighter is this. Is stick. it like D2? No. So this will be a D, D4 swing D4. weight, but it's the overall weight, the total weight that, that I'm more worried about. And then this will significantly reduce it about 50 grams. Okay. So you're looking for about a 12 to 15% uh, decrease in weight and potentially increase in weight, but that's significantly more to create the, the speed and be able to swing it faster. Uh, if I want to swing the club head 120 miles an hour, I need to be able to swing this thing 125, 126, and then I'm training my, my neural system neural system to, to swing it faster. Makes sense. Well, I can't wait to watch a full thing of how you train outside of the golf course. That's another segment. I know, we'll I have that. to see that. I'm going to take some tips, but thank you for the driving tips today and uh, play well this week. Thanks, Troy. Thank you, Phil.